Let's say you get invited out into the middle of the desert to shoot something that is a week long. You don't have any cell service or electricity provided. In order to accomplish such a task, you're going to need to have a usable backcountry FPV setup. In this video, I'm going to share mine and just go over some tricks that I've learned over the past year on how to fly at remote locations over an extended period of time. The first thing I wanted to go over is power. When you're out in the middle of nowhere, it can be difficult to find a source of electricity and also a way to store it. So what I use is I have a 500 watt power bank and a 300 watt one. The 500 watt power bank I typically use for any kind of drone equipment, cameras, anything that requires a large amount of electricity. So this is what I'll be charging my LiPos with. I typically keep it on the next to the front seat of the car so that if I'm driving and charging at the same time and a fire breaks out, I can take my fire extinguisher, which I have right next to me, and put it out right away. The 300 watt one, I typically keep in the back of my truck. I use it to charge my phone overnight, to charge radios, my laptop whenever I'm using it. So this is good for GoPros and six inches, but if you're looking for something heavier, you're definitely gonna want a bit more storage. It's one thing to be able to store electricity, it's a whole nother ball game to be able to generate it. What I use to generate electricity is I have a solar panel in the back here. So that's great if I'm parked in one location for an extended period of time. I can just put that on, it's 100 watts. It typically only charges at about 60 watts for some reason, but it's enough for me. You can also use your truck to generate the electricity for you. It gives me about 40 watts of electricity whenever I have my motor running. So if it's cloudy or if there is terrible weather, I can just keep my car on idle and that'll be generating the electricity for me and storing in here. I do not recommend using your car battery to charge your LiPos because well, first of all, your car battery can die, and if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're kind of stuck, especially if you're alone. And also, I've had buddies who have blown their fuses because they were charging too many LiPos at the same time, and if you blow a fuse in your car, you're kind of screwed if you're out in the middle of nowhere because then you can't charge other stuff. So I highly recommend using the car to charge the power bank and then using the power bank to charge any other equipment you might have. Oops. The next thing I wanna talk about is your sleeping arrangement. My go-to choice is a truck because I can access locations that sedans, RVs, and vans aren't capable of. And sometimes you need to be able to reach these locations in order to capture these amazing shots. The other perk about having a truck is that it's a lot more inconspicuous. Let's say you've been driving for 13 hours at a time, you are exhausted, you're falling asleep at the wheel, and you just need to pull over and catch some sleep. You can go at a hotel parking lot, a Walmart parking lot, any parking lot, and park there overnight. Just make sure that there's no security at hotel parking lots. Some hotels have security, they'll kick you out. If you're in a van and an RV, it might be a bit more obvious that there's somebody sleeping in that vehicle than if you're in a truck or a sedan. Now, if you are sleeping in your truck bed, you wanna make sure that you have some nice foam pads that separate you from the actual metal. Or you have like a wooden platform that you're sleeping on because your truck, it's really cold overnight and that cold, it's gonna feel like you're just sleeping on a cold sheet of ice. So you wanna make sure that there's something separating you from the truck bed and I've made that mistake before. The sleeping bag I have is rated for negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 30 degrees Celsius. That is perfect. Even in locations where it's super warm, such as San Diego, I still bring this along because along the way, there will probably be some place with a higher elevation that'll be really cold overnight. And I like to keep myself super warm when I sleep. But if you are in a super warm location, you can also just throw the sleeping bag on top of you and just sleep on the foam pads that you have. And that'll make sure that you don't overheat overnight. I think it's really important to invest in a really nice sleeping bag and really nice power station. That's just gonna make your experience that much easier to be able to capture footage out in the middle of nowhere. Next, we're gonna talk about drones. Now, a good rule of thumb is to have two of everything for any kind of shoot that you're going on. So that's at the bare minimum. So this includes goggles, controllers, 
uh, crossfire modules. You want to make sure you have two of each just in case one breaks. You always have something to cover. So I actually have three snowies here because I'm shooting base jumpers and that's my favorite drone to film base jumpers with. But I also brought along a Cinewhoop and my Speed Demon just in case. Last thing I want to cover is the parts bag. You want to make sure you bring all of your tools, a lot of props, a lot of antennas. The rule of tools does not apply for antennas. You're going to need a dozen at least. I break them all the time. Uh, you're going to want to have video transmitters, you're going to want to have your soldering iron, solder, a backup charger, ND filters, spare batteries for your GoPro, spare GoPros, extra motors, screws, wires, anything that you can think of that is sitting on your drone workshop at home that you might need to use in the field to make a quick parts replacement. When you don't have a parts bag, what we used to do is take stuff off of the backup drone and put it on the main drone, but you basically kill your backup drone because you're using its organs. The first trip that Carter and I went on I bought an extra armaton quad and by the end of the trip it was completely stripped it was just a frame because we just kept taking parts off of it and using it on other drones miscellaneous things that you might need radios super super important when you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's no cell service the other thing is a fire extinguisher if one of your lipos explodes in your car you don't want to be stranded in the middle of nowhere so you put out that fire using your fire extinguisher double the amount of water that you would normally bring just because you're going to be using that for utensils you can be using that to clean stuff clean wounds food also double that sometimes you have to stay a bit longer than you expect to i tend to go with canned food just because it doesn't spoil bread juice sardines my go-to road trip food is subway and sardines that's the way i live my life basically <laughs> always bring something that'll protect you in the rain at this point i just keep a stash of jackets in my car in case somebody needs them i just have them there always always want to have a first aid kit around if you're catching your drone and you mess up or you accidentally fly into someone else that's going to save you i have flown into myself and i was bleeding a little bit the extra bandage that i had in my car really helped me out to stop the blood flow and just to you know clean up the wound and so forth if there's anything i missed make sure to comment below thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next one